Welcome back to Media Law at Griffith University. And I'm wearing a t-shirt today because it's from the Danish School of Media and Journalism. And I have my colleague here, Thomas Pallison, who teaches media law at that Danish School of Media and Journalism. He's a television journalist with a long background in both television journalism and its teaching, and more recently in teaching media law. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, you've been here with us for a week on Exchange, and it's, uh, we've both learned a lot, I think, through your visit, sharing ideas and so on. Uh, is there much difference between Danish media law students and Australian media law students? Well, you might say they are, in a way, they're all the same, or you can say they are as different in Australia as, uh, as they are in Denmark. You've got all sorts of students here, we, you have got all sorts of students here, we have got all students in Denmark. Yes, yeah, and as you know, we have students that might be studying law or journalism or yeah. public relations or communication in different ways or yeah. sometimes just as an interest. Um, and that's reflected in the uh, different disciplines that you have here yeah. in, in the T-shirt from your institution. Yes, yeah. yes we have communications, PR, um, we have photojournalism, we have TV journalism and we have got newspaper journalism, we've got it all, yeah. And as we've discussed many times, uh, everyone is now a publisher uh, with the internet and social media, so it's people beyond these occupations that need to know about it. Yeah, mm. and that's a big challenge because when you are in PR something, you, prudent, you probably wouldn't think about this, about uh, free expression of speech, or uh, all those things, but now you're actually a publisher, so you'll have to know of those things. Yeah, that's yeah. a very important insight. Yeah. Um, you've been there for actually our first classes uh, in one of our trimesters mm -hmm. uh, this week, where we've talked about free expression, and we've talked about how often free expression has to get balanced against other rights and interests. And particularly in Europe, uh, where European nations operate under a special charter. Uh, so would you mind telling us how that balance is struck in Europe? Yes, in Europe we have, yes, as most people would know, a lot of countries, yes, mm. and each got is different laws, like your states in Australia. But above this is the European Convention of Human Rights. Yes which actually are above it, so this, even the, su the Supreme Courts in the, all nations uh, have to take this into account. And uh, in the Human Rights Convention, there's two principles that are important in this case. One is the right to private life, mm. and that's, mm. for example, the right to avoid defamation. And the other one is the right to free expression, which another important right, and those two are always balanced. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so you mentioned both defamation and yeah. privacy in there, and um, clearly privacy sometimes gets intermingled with reputation or defamation. Yeah. Uh, most famous here, coming from Europe and the UK, have been some cases involving celebrities where they feel the media, particularly the paparazzi, have invaded their privacy in breach of the convention, uh, and the media have contested this by saying, no, we had the right to free expression yep. to do that. And yep. you told my students about a case involving Princess Caroline of Monaco. Uh, she's been to court several times over yeah. this. Yeah. Would you mind telling us just a little bit about Princess Caroline and her cases? Yes, I'll yeah. try to do it in brief. Yes, yes uh, Princess Caroline is the Prince of, of Monaco, and uh, she's followed by a lot of photographers, paparazzi photographers and reporters for the magazines, and well, in a way, she said, oh, I have to go to stop, and she went to the German uh, court, filed a complaint, and in Germany, you're allowed to take pictures of people and publish them if they're part of daily news. And, okay. of course, oh. the, um, the journalist was said, and the court said, well, this is daily news, so, can't, so you cannot do anything about it, and she uh, filed in a complaint 
to the European Court of Human Rights and they said, well, it might be so in Germany, but as a European citizen, you have a right to private life. And in this case, this right to human rights sort of excess the journalist's right to free expression. So those mm. things were balanced out and said, well, there's no actually uh, democratic enhancement or there's no, this doesn't give anything to the democratic society. So mm. the right to free expression has, wouldn't get, uh, have much weight. Mm. And th yeah. these were photographs of her taken uh, with a long lens a by long lens paparazzi yeah. of her yeah. in a bikini yeah. Yeah. In, on the beach yeah. in a private okay. situation. Yes. yes, so there had to be a retrial in Germany. Uh, and a few years after, Photo uh, <coughs> photographers were taking new photos of her and, and she was in the magazines again with the headline, the princess uh, enjoying her holiday where, while her father, the king, is ill. Mm. Mm. And she filed in a complaint again to the German courts and they said, this is daily news, sorry madam. Mm. And she filed in a complaint to the European Court of Human Rights. And now they said, well, this is an area of some public interest. Mm. Well, a princess having holiday while her father's ill, well, you could have an interesting discussion about this. Yes. And also, this was not made by long lens and so. Mm. And mm. they said also, well, she's not just a private person, she's some sort of celebrity and she has some uh, official role, uh, a, par a part to play in Monaco. So in this time, they waited, the, the balance changed, and the reporters were allowed to do this. And this uh, is now the European case law. So mm. every case will be judged upon the same principles that were taken from the Carolina from Hannover. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a really good explanation. And I think for students' purposes, they need to understand that the way the European courts handle it is that, um, firstly, the courts will look at the methods of intrusion yeah. of, of the, the yeah. journalists, the paparazzi, yeah. and if they're yeah. using subterfuge or, yeah. Uh, yeah. or particularly long prying lenses, yeah. then that would work against the media's free yeah. expression. Yeah. But also the kind of story and the yeah. public position yeah. of the people involved. And yeah. so Princess Caroline is on the public purse yeah. as a member of the royal family. Yeah. She has certain duties and obligations and her father uh, is ill. Um, yeah. So you, they would take that into account as well in balancing those rights. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the really important thing is that they actually look upon what is published, what's actually the subject of the story, and they have this, this is it of public interest or is it a, and is it a matter of public debate and it's enough that it's uh, only a public matter to a certain degree yes. uh, or to some degree so it doesn't have to be something about well the prime minister prime minister assassinated someone or such very formal uh, stories about what the state is doing or something it's Okay, if such even a sort of human interest story could be protected by this freedom of free expression. But it needs some element of public concern or uh, gravity about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we've had a, a judge uh, talk in, use this expression, um, uh, the public interest yeah. does not just mean interesting to the public. So it no, can't be just public curiosity, it needs to have some element of public concern. Yes, and the same thing will be said in Europe. This is a very important distinction to be made, that mm -hmm. it's not, well, the public is interested, but it has to be in the interest of the people. Right. Well, this yeah. is fascinating, not just now as we look at free expression, but also later in our course when we look at privacy, because we do look at Princess Caroline's case along with several other celebrity cases, mm. those involving Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, uh, Naomi Campbell and uh, various top celebrity footballers and so on. And uh, Princess Caroline sits among those as examples of how the European courts 
balance this. But for now, uh, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back uh, with other interviews with our guests uh, in future modules. So please tune in again and, and hear about media law from somebody else. Thanks for joining us today.